this panel is about uh, respectful reporting, uh, the uh, issues of LGBT or lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgendered uh, issues in Asia, as well as in uh, the United States, actually, with an addition uh, from someone, an AJ member who's flown in from the US. So uh, let's just go around the, um, the half circle, in addition to our uh, guest, our Skype guest, as you can see uh, above us on the screen. Uh, let's go ahead and start with um, Bobby Calvon. Uh, over here, actually, let me pass these out to you guys. All right, again, my name is Bobby Calvon. Um, a journalist based in, uh, in the US, uh, based in Washington, D.C., but I am on a special project in Nebraska doing what we call the Heartland Project. And what we're doing is partnering with the newsrooms across Nebraska to enhance coverage of communities of color and LGBT issues. So, you know, over the next uh, uh, year or so, well, actually nine months left, um, I'll be delving into, um, um, you know, same-sex marriage, um, and a, ho a whole host of other uh, issues that a lot of newspapers, TV stations, and radio stations don't really uh, do anything about, um, <coughs> mainly because of, uh, well, I'll be honest with you, they're, they're, they're afraid. So uh, my job is to try and get them to, uh, to do more coverage on LGBT. Can you ask him to hold his mic closer to the mouth? Oh, OK. Can you hear me? Thank can you. you. Can, can, can you hear me now? Anyway, I was just um, explaining that um, I'm in Nebraska doing some coverage on LGBT issues. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I'm Nigel Collett. I'm a part-time journalist. I've been writing on gay issues in Hong Kong since 2006. I started with G Magazine, which used to be part of Hong Kong Magazine. I've been writing for Friday since 2006. You can't hear me. Uh huh. Can you hear me now? So, That's good. good. Okay, I'll speak louder. And I was saying I work. I've been writing part time for Friday. Asia, and I now uh, have articles occasionally published in of all uh, newspapers, China Daily, uh, which is quite good about publishing uh, almost anything LGBT now in Hong Kong. Uh, and I act as secretary of the Alliance of LGBT Groups in Hong Kong, the Pink Alliance, which I've done since 2008. Hi, I'm Josie. I'm from Plug Magazine. I'm the community editor. Plug Magazine is a very new LGBT-based magazine in Hong Kong. It's still in its first year. Um, it's based on community and culture. Its focus is to be very inclusive. We want the magazine to be something that um, anyone will enjoy picking up, reading, and hopefully, hopefully learn something from it as well. Um, you know, it's for, we don't like to say this is a gay magazine. We like to say it's community and culture. You can learn about the LGBT community in Hong Kong through our magazine, and you can also be entertained. Hi. Hello. I'm Arthur Tam. I'm from Time Out Magazine. And um, I'm one of the section editors there. And um, <laughs> among other things that I do, I cover the LGBT page for us. And then so basically anything that has to do with LGBT events or news, uh, I, am, I am in charge of that. And uh, I've been doing that for the past two and a half years. And then in that interim, I've also had a radio show on RTHK3 called <laughs> From Top to Bottom. And we basically talked about everything that has to do with being gay, <laughs> basically. And over to you, Ashok. Can you please introduce yourself to the audience? Hi, I'm, uh, my name is Ashok Raukavi. I'm speaking to you from Bombay. I edit the LGBT magazine, Bombay Dose. Uh, one of the oldest uh, LGBT magazines represents all sexual minorities in India. It's published in English. It used to be published in English and Hindi, but not anymore. Uh, it's available also on the net. Um, uh, I also am chair of the Hamsafa Trust, which is uh, a not-for-profit uh, uh, for uh, male sexual min minorities, although we work with women now and transgendered 
uh, women transgender. So um, I'm based here in Bombay and I'm very, very happy that I am uh, on the panel with all of you all. Uh, and I hope to contribute as much as I can. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Ashok. And uh, I'll stick with you, please, uh, since I have you now. Uh, in India, how fair do you think the media is in covering LGBT issues? Uh, okay, India is, uh, uh, although the language uh, I'm speaking to you is in English, and the English language press is uh, quite sensitive to some extent in the sense uh, they don't still, uh, now they don't use the word like pervert or deviant. Uh, they do use the word gay, but it's used like a proper noun, like uh, he is a gay, that sort of thing. Or they, they won't say gay means someone who is homosexual. So there, there are problems in reporting, but it's not as bad as the language press, the Hindi and the Marathi and, you know, India has got 16 official languages. And it's here that there's a lot of bad reporting, deviants, perverts, I mean, whatever um, uh, words I can dredge out of uh, uh, very distasteful and very derisive words are used in the languages, in the language press. And that's where we are doing a project on sensitizing the media to uh, reporting on LGBT. The, this project called the Sanchar Project, which is going one year. And we will be holding workshops with the media in the, in the next two or three months on sensitive reporting for LGBT. All right, thank you, Ashok. I'd like to move here to Hong Kong and uh, Nigel with you. What do you think is a state of uh, um, fairness in covering LGBT issues in Hong Kong? You've been here uh, for a fair amount of time. I think you have uh, some perspective on this. I think things have improved. We've seen a change which has been going on now probably for the last two, three years, even in the Chinese language press. And uh, obviously, I, I can't read the Chinese language press, but in our organization, we have people who translate it for us daily. And we've seen, I think particularly since the Miss W case, the transgender marriage case, things like Ming Pao and Apple Daily reporting much more objectively and without the kind of um, derogatory words that ASOC speaking that used to crop up um, when I first started this kind of work in the middle period. The English language press has been very much on side now for probably about five, six years. If you read either the Standard or the South China Morning Post, uh, you'll find that um, they are pretty much behind uh, LGBT rights. And uh, Josie, similar question. Um, I have two comments to make. First of all, I'd say that um, as an editor of an English language, um, publication, sometimes it can be a struggle to find the correct information because a lot of stuff comes up in Chinese. So it can be a challenge for us to report fairly because, again, it's difficult to find that information. Um, secondly, um, I think that there is still some advancements that the some of the English press needs to make, the English language press, in terms of um, the terminology that they use for LGBT people. Um, and all of the terminology is very well laid out in on the GLAAD website on how to be respectful, how to use um, terms that are not derogatory. Um, obviously, they're not nearly as bad as the ones that Ashok is mentioning in India, but, you know, we can still step it up and, um, you know, use the same terms that everyone else uh, is using in the English press. Now, in terms of the GLAAD website, of course, that's a G-L-A-A-D website, not just the G-L-A-D. Yeah. Uh, I suppose there's a GLAAD, GLAAD. website. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, and can you just delve a little bit more into the GLAAD website for those who might not know it so much or for those who are streaming and watching us online? Sure, well, I used it when uh, reporting about transgender issues. Um, and even, um, even I, found a few things that I was unaware of, you know, and I looked it up because I wasn't sure how to be completely sensitive. Um, for example, again, there are certain terms that um, transgender people do not enjoy to read about themselves. They don't want to be called um, transgendered. Um, obviously, tranny is completely off the books. 
you know, you should use a transgender man or a transgender woman. Um, so they, you know, they have guidelines uh, regarding that um, and also about how to write about lesbians, um, gay people, bisexual people, you know, just so you can, it doesn't take, it takes less than five minutes to just look at that website and tidy up your writing. And uh, sticking to Hong Kong, Arthur, how about yourself? Um, I have to agree with what Josie said. I think the terminology is probably what people should be more conscious about when they write about LGBT topics. Um, beyond that, I also agree with Nigel that the press is pretty much, it seems like they're behind like progress and equal rights and everything like that. Uh, it's actually kind of, uh, well, I understand Cantonese, and sometimes when I watch like Apple Daily's coverage on protests from radical conservative groups, it's quite comical. <laughs> and it seems that though they get a lot of like, um, I don't know, shit sometimes for <laughs> not being like the best media outlet for um, proper news, <laughs> it seems that they are pretty much on the side of LGBT rights, at least from what I can tell. Um, and with more and more events like Pink Season that we have, it seems uh, the media here is more interested in what LGBT people have to say, and it seems quite fair to me. And uh, moving to the United States with Bobby, working on your current project with the AJA, maybe tell a little bit about that, as well as um, uh, the fairness or lack thereof in U.S. media. I know, of course, the U.S. is a huge country, uh, similar to, uh, you know, on uh, in terms of population uh, and in terms of disparity in culture, uh, but uh, if you can summarize how you feel. Sure. Well, first of all, let me um, just address this terminology uh, aspect. In the U.S., you know, unless there is a reason to uh, mention that someone is gay, lesbian, or transgender, we ignore it uh, by and large. Um, or at, at least that is the practice that many of us who um, aspire to write fairly and accurately about uh, gay, lesbian, transgender, and bisexual issues um, uh, strive for. Because sexuality has no, um, there's no relevance to a lot of the things that we write about, unless it's specifically about, uh, for example, example same-sex marriage, for example. Um, uh, transgender issue. If the person wants to be referred to as he or she, I will refer to that person as he or she, I will not bring up the fact that that person is transgender. And I don't know whether or not the practice is uh, that way here as well. Um, now, the thing that I find somewhat similar to Asia, uh, I'm in Nebraska, which is the, mid, the middle part of uh, the US. It's a different kind of culture from, say, New York City or San Francisco. Um, people in Nebraska and much of the Midwest, um, and I'm stereotyping here, um, so forgive me, they're rather polite, like many Asian cultures, um, you know. So talking about gay, lesbian, transgender, and bisexual issues is sometimes not an easy thing to do because it brings out a lot of discom discomfort in people. And again, my role as part of this Heartland project is to try and push people off their uh, well com comfort level and get them to write about things that might bring about some anxiety because a lot of the people in the Midwest might not yet be ready. I um, am in Nebraska, which is one of the few states, there are 27 states now, right now that allow same-sex marriage. A judge just, um, um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, um, uh, a law in, uh, in Wisconsin was just um, um, struck down by a judge. So now there's 27 states that allow for same-sex marriage. Nebraska still has a law that prevents uh, same-sex couples from uh, getting married. And there doesn't seem to be any movement because the people in Nebraska don't feel compelled to do anything about it. So that is some of the issues that I'm um, faced with as a reporter there. I add something though on in just terms of writing. I, I um, have found over the, the last well, eight years I've been writing on these kind of issues that I always get it wrong. Somebody somewhere always objects to the terminology I use. Um, homosexual is a word which a lot of young people really can't stand. But older men don't like being called gay. Um, 
transgender people in Hong Kong don't want to be called Tongza, um, which is what we all thought they were going to be, all of us going to be called to get rid of this problem of LGBTQI, all of those kind of things. That doesn't work because they don't think they are. So eventually you, you work out that you're going to make a mistake in the articles you write as long as you treat it with sympathy and you show that you're actually trying to say something that's true. Don't worry too much about it. Somebody somewhere will write something rude at the bottom of your article, but who cares, as long as you're trying to say something that's truthful. In uh, putting this panel together, one uh, challenge uh, for us was to try to get people who are uh, in the local community, local journalism community. Clearly, all of us are uh, westernized or western. Uh, and so I'm curious, uh, this difficulty, I wonder, uh, you know, with you guys, being uh, reporters uh, for the past several years or so in the communities, uh, are there, you know, LGBT reporters out there, or are they nervous to literally come out and say who they are to speak? <laughs> Everyone's like, no, you, no, you. <laughs> yeah, I think there are out there. We've got friends who are in the media. Uh, that there's quite a lot, but uh, it's it's not uh, it's not normal for them to actually say who they are. Uh, they don't write about their own sexuality. They don't write about the issues specifically. And amongst us all, I don't think there are. Um, it's a pity. Um, there should be, because there's some guys out there who ought to be talking about themselves. I think I feel like it would be hard to write about LGBT news if you weren't gay or didn't come out. It's a little bit counterintuitive. Like if I was in the closet and then I wrote about it, you seem to disagree. Well, no, I'm not gay. I'm yeah, no, no, straight. and I'm sure that's great. So, like, I mean, if you are straight and then you write about LGBT news, that's great too. I'm just saying, like, but if you are a closeted gay man or who isn't open about your sexuality and you are covering LGBT news. It doesn't really, but I mean, it just seems like why wouldn't you be able to, if you are- I could be lying to you right now and, and, and say that I'm straight, I'm not. Does that make a difference? I guess not necessarily, but if I'm an open gay man, I would like to, Look, like if someone was able to ask me- I'm not African American. I cover African Americans. I, True. I, I cover them fairly. I, cover them accurately. I can be a straight guy. I can be a closeted guy. I can be an openly gay person. And I can cover any story that I want to. As long as I follow the journalistic rules of being fair and accurate. And I think, and that's one of the missions of my project in Nebraska, to get newsrooms, regardless of whether or not they're African American, Latino, Asian, gay, straight, to cover every segment of the community. Because a lot of these communities, especially gay and lesbians, they don't get the kind of coverage in the U.S. that they should. And now the only time that they do get coverage is when it comes to politics and same-sex marriage. But when it comes to day-to-day -day life, they get swept under the rug because it makes people very uncomfortable talking about two guys having sex or two women having sex or, or what have you. You know, it makes a lot of people uncomfortable. Yeah. That's true, and I don't disagree with you. Any like, I, I could write about minorities like in Hong Kong, and I don't have to be like a domestic like helper to be able to write about domestic helper helper news. But I'm I saying like, if I am posed with the question of being, am I like, am I gay? I can't hear it. Then, then I would actually. Then I'd have to like, in, I would admit it, and then I wouldn't be like afraid of saying it because I think that's part of the honesty of it too. Uh, I, I want to move on uh, to, to another question, actually. In terms of uh, whether you're uh, an LGBT journalist or whether you're a straight journalist, I'm curious uh, what kinds, if any, um, discrimination or maybe suspicion or doubts about sincerity are there. For example, with, um, with Ashok, you know, when you identify yourself as being gay, uh, and you're covering issues, have you ever been discriminated against? Have you ever seen any violence towards yourself? Uh, and if you have, can you recount uh, something that's happened to you? Uh, <clears throat> not, uh, not really, Remy. Uh, what, uh, in India, what there is, is mostly uh, a, 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 a curious curiosity. Uh, they want to know. Uh, we've, uh, we've held workshops for uh, mainline, uh, you know, journalists from the mainstream society, like newspapers, magazines, uh, to report on uh, gay and lesbian uh, issues. And what we discovered is that 
they know so little about sex, sexuality, and gender that uh, their questions are absolutely primary and basic. And uh, they, they're curious. There isn't that type of homophobia that I would notice uh, are out there uh, in the West. Uh, so uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, I've never had an issue about uh, me being gay. And uh, because I'm a member of the press club, I've been a, a, a secretary of the press club when I was in mainstream journalism. And now that I'm editing a LGBT magazine, uh, I'm just carrying over my core competency to report about community affairs. I don't see the hostility that uh, may others may be seeing in other countries. Like in Africa, I heard it's very dangerous to be out and gay and be reporting uh, LGBT issues. I don't think that exists in India so much, but they don't understand. And the words and the, the, the definitions are so confusing that many a time you have a problem uh, you know, explaining to them what is the difference between sexual orientation, sexual behavior, sexual identities. And we do courses on that for journalists. And that's where then they start asking questions and there is a sensitive, sensitive type of reporting. I'm not very really sure that straight journalists understand enough about the community to be totally fair because they're still outsiders looking into the community. So I'm fascinated when somebody says that he's going to be very fair and objective. Uh, there's an effort to be that, but objectivity is not uh, easy, you know, in look, looking at minorities within society. That's what I think. Uh, Arthur, same question for you. Um, being uh, a reporter for Time Out, covering LGBT issues here, I mean, everyone in the community, in the LGBT community, pretty much knows you. You're out there. We, we know that. Um, has anyone come up to you and said, you know, you sort of need to tone it down or you need to do something, um, you know, to adjust image or, or, or whatever? I haven't faced that at all, really, actually. So you um, just cut them down. You just say no. <laughs> <laughs> Probably if that, if that happened to be like, whatever, like, this is how I think I should report it. But um, for the most part, it seems that, I mean, I mean, I'm not reporting in an African country where homosexuality is criminal, so um, I don't have anybody like trying to throw stones Louder. at me. Thankfully, um, I ha the only story that I think I've gotten sort of a negative commentary on that I've done was sort of reporting on how there's an increase of meth use within the gay community here. And some people within the LGBT community told me that I shouldn't write stories like this because it paints us in a bad light. And I didn't agree with that because I felt like I am just, I mean, the LGBT community is not just about rainbows and equals rights. There's like a whole bunch of issues to tackle and to let people know about. And if there's like an increase of drug use, I think that's perfectly fair to talk about. Um, I don't see why I need to be like um, held accountable for it in terms of like that I shouldn't do it because it has negative connotations. It, it's interesting that it's someone from the community versus one might expect that it might be someone from out of the community. Um, for Bobby and Josie, I, I, I don't presume to know or do I need to ask your preferences. But um, you know, for whatever I've you already come out as, <laughs> as being straight. Well, maybe. I've known that for years, Bobby. <laughs> uh, or for yourself, Josie, as well. I mean, uh, covering covering the communities. Do people ask for your intentions? You know, why is a straight man covering LGBT issues? Sort of okay. similar to what you were talking before. And Josie, for you as well, as being a woman, you know, uh, why are you doing it versus you know covering something else, for example? Uh, well. I initially got involved with Plug Magazine because um, a lot of um, gay publications do tend to focus more on the G in LGBT. So I came in to bring a bit of L into the, into the publication. So for me, that's why, just to make sure that um, you know, everybody's represented. Um, yeah, that's it really. Right. Uh, on the... Uh, adding the L in. Here in Hong Kong, it seems like the gay, the G, and the L are very much uh, disconnected. You know, if you're in the gay world, people know who you are, but people in the G world don't know who people in the L world are, and I, I, it might be vice versa, I don't know. Do you feel that is the case, and 
why? I feel like um, that's definitely the case here more so than other countries. Um, there's a lot more going on for gay men in Hong Kong than there is for lesbian women. Um, but, you know, there's uh, at the Pink Alliance, um, you have LGBT, you have everybody. So there are many organizations where uh, we all come together. Um, you, we've got it in Plug, we've got it in organizations like the Pink Alliance. But I would say in terms of the community, it's quite separated. Um, especially, I see it more with um, with the local community. Um, you have very separate uh, clubs. Um, but, you know, that's something that we need to change ourselves. You know, I don't segregate myself. Um, so yeah, I think there could there could be more integration in that sense. Um, I, but the thing is, is it's like for the LGBT community. I think a lot of people have the misconception that because you are in the LGBT community, that we all should have something in common. And I think that's a common misconception. The only thing that really binds all the characteristics of our community together is our fight for human rights, mostly. Um, I, I don't know if that's like necessarily a pro. Like I mean, I have lesbian friends. But I don't know if I like I feel obligated that I have to go to a lesbian bar sometimes. I feel like, oh, I am so interested in this too. Because well, they don't want you there anyway. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right? So it is fair that there there is divide in that section. There's not much that really hold I mean, and that's fine that there's no like connecting thread other than sexuality sometimes for for the human you know, rights. I have to I have to admit too that uh, covering LGBT issues. Um, I have been told that I've, I'm not welcomed. I went into a gay bar um, in Omaha, Nebraska, and that was my first time ever going into a gay bar by myself. I, I have been to gay bars, but usually with uh, gay friends. Um, but that was my first time, and I was going out there to you know, learn the community and, 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 and source. And the first thing they asked me um, when they find out I'm a reporter is whether or not I'm, I'm, I'm gay or, or, or straight. And yeah. Uh, yeah, they do, they do. They, they want me to out myself as, as um, you know, straight. And once I did tell them that I'm, I'm straight, it became a little more icy, I have to, I have to admit. Um, and that's one of the things that I am having to, um, um, and is it Ashok? Um, yeah, yes. you know, exactly what you were saying. You know, I, I have to say, concede, acknowledge that I can never fully understand what it's like but I can make the effort to understand. And I think that's all that we can uh, ask of people uh, covering any uh, community, you know, just to make the effort and to understand and be respectful. Uh, I want to open it up to the audience for questions, but before I do that, uh, I just want to go through one round really quick. Uh, you touched on it about uh, LGBT stereotypes and coverage. Is there one pet peeve that you've seen about uh, the LGBT uh, communities uh, that you say you want to tell other people watching here and online that, you know, this is how it is, not this. In terms of reporting or like what I think, um, one of my major pet peeves is, well, n not that there's like, this is how it is or that's how it is. But for me, I think the hardest part in being an LGBT reporter is getting people to talk to me because everyone's still very uh, uh, not fully open or they're just concerned about their identity because they're not out to their parents and then it becomes difficult to get a story. Um, even uh, Bobby's straight and people are icy to him. Uh, I get a lot of like icy sort of stares too, as soon as people know that you're in the media and you go to a, a gay club, try to get information, they're like, oh, you're a journalist? And it's kind of like, uh, no, we don't like that. I get the icy stares, too. Um, yeah, I, I think one of, again, one of the biggest challenges is uh, here in Hong Kong, you know, there's not much visible homophobia, but... I would say the majority of 
gay people, LGBT people in Hong Kong are too scared to come out. Um, fear of discrimination in the workplace, fear of how their parents will react, um, can make it quite challenging. Um, and I think journalism can help to change um, the local attitude towards gay people. Um, you know, although there aren't many people that go out there and say, oh, homosexuality is bad, you know, the, the more conservative Christian groups do, um, are a bit more outspoken in that, but, you know, most of the community that I know, especially for the local community, are in the closet, either in the workplace or with their family. Um, and I just hope that with, you know, with good reporting, with good journalism, we can help to change attitudes through um, being inclusive of everyone, not saying, you know, this article or this magazine is just for LGBT people. This is for everyone so that you can learn about us and you can learn. Hopefully that can change the mindset of people um, to, you know, and that can progress forward and then hopefully we can advance with um, equal rights in Hong Kong as well for LGBT people. Right. Um, Ashok, I want to bring you in as well. Uh, what is your pet peeve in the reporting world as an LGBT journalist? If you uh, uh, could have one thing changed. Well, uh, I think some of what they were saying made sense. The po point is there are stereotypes, whether one likes it or not. The stereotypes are there in uh, television serials, in the movies, uh, even sometimes in newspaper articles. So I'm not really worried about the stereotypes. What I'm interested in is that there is an uh, incredible diversity within the LGBT community that is not being reported properly. And that is what concerns me. I mean, I don't really care about how people perceive us as long as they don't perceive us in a derisive manner where we are caricatured, you know. There, of course, there are stereotypes, and these stereotypes are sometimes reinforced by uh, LGBT behavior. But uh, what I mean to say is that what uh, I don't see the diversity being reflected, the diversity in the LGBT community being reflected in fair and, uh, you know, just reporting about the community. That's, that is what worries me. Okay, thank you, Ashok. And uh, Nigel? I would agree very much with what everybody said so far. That, that one of the things that always irritates me is the way we get trivialized. Um, the, the stereotype uh, of us as um, pleasure-seeking, we're always supposed to have such good times, um, fashion-conscious, um, shallow, basically. Um, and that leads into this business that uh, actually there's no need to change, the, the, there's no problem in Hong Kong because it's also nice, isn't it? The two things go very closely together, and I think we need to get at that stereotype to change the world. No, I mean, isn't this a stereotype right here? <laughs> I mean, really well dressed there. Um, <laughs> But I, I totally agree with Ashok. Um, you know, I'm a bit of a contrarian um, when you, you were talking a little bit earlier. I mean, I'm not in any position, nor do I want to be in any position, to change any minds. I have no agenda. Um, I am not trying to change anybody's minds about homosexuality. They can have their own beliefs. What I'm concerned about is portraying people as people, you know, as they are. Uh, you know, one of my pet peeves with uh, American media is the fact that the, any, the only time that they seem to ever do anything about uh, uh, LGBT communities is during some kind of gay pride parade. That's about the only time you will see coverage, you know, uh, when people are parading. Same thing with uh, minorities, you know. Um, Asian Heritage Month, um, that's about the only time you'll read about Asian Americans in, in the U.S or Cinco de Mayo for, uh, for Latinos. Um, so it, it should, people get suspicious of us when they think we have an agenda. And you know, my job is to make sure that I don't come out with an agenda and just cover people for who they are. But even just through doing that can help change people's attitudes. No, and, that, and for that, I, I, don't, I don't really care about changing people's attitudes, you know. They can do what they, what they uh, want with the information I give them, you know. And if, if it 
changes lives, great. If it doesn't, okay, great, thank you. Uh, with that, uh, I did see some hands going up. So why don't we do one, two, three, four, five, starting with uh, J1. Okay. Thank you, Remy. My name is Jae Cho from Seoul, South Korea. I want to ask about the religious issues happening these days. Um, don't you guys heard any voices who are very suffering with the religious issue from the people from the LGBT community? Because recently in South Korea, the one of the very famous movie directors. I can't hear that, AJ. Uh, can you hear me well? I can't hear you. Ask your question. I will repeat his question, Ashok. So uh, you go ahead and yeah, answer your question. Okay, you. okay. Then I'll continue. Um, recent days, famous movie director whose name is Kim Jo Hwang Soo opened his public wedding ceremony with his gay couple at the downtown Seoul. And some Christian communities demanding that this kind of wedding ceremony is illegal and they're demanding to cancel that kind of official wedding ceremony and there's a lot of criticism from the Christians in South Korea but recently South Korea opens their minds to the LGBT communities for them but not 100% of people are admitting that kind of wedding ceremony so uh, I want to hear you guys from other kinds of how they are managing that kind of issues from the LGBT community and aren't you guys covered this kind of issues before for your coverage thank you all right, so uh, Ashok, the question uh, in the topic is about uh, Christian communities versus gay communities, basically uh, coverage and uh, tension between the two. Well, actually, oh it's, my not, God. it's not just Christian communities. Um, we're talking about most religious groups. Um, I am probably going to be doing a story, for example, in, uh, in Nebraska because there is a high number of refugees from um, Asia, um, in particular uh, Iraqis, uh, Muslims. Um, there was a, uh, a, a woman, a lesbian, who uh, was beaten up by her brother, for example. And, she, you know, he denies it, but she says that she was beaten because she's gay, you know, or, or lesbian. Um, so it, it, it impacts uh, uh, people regardless of, of, of religion. Um. In Hong Kong, we find that um, some of the biggest opposition to the advancement of LGBT rights comes from the more conservative, quite powerful Christian organizations. Um, actually, quite recently, they even held um, a march that was supposed to celebrate family, but had very strong, strong undertones of saying a family must have a mother and a father. It shouldn't be two mothers. It shouldn't be two fathers. So there's, you know, that that is a big issue in Hong Kong is the opposition that comes from these certain, not all, but certain Christian organizations. Um, but we're also lucky enough to have here lots of churches that are open. There's a church called um, the, I always get this the wrong way, Blessed Minority Christian Fellowship. That's right. <laughs> Got it. Which is um, an LGBT church. Um, there's also an openly lesbian pastor um, called Grace something. And um, also at Kowloon Union Church, they have um, previously held sermons specifically for LGBT people and they're very welcoming. Um, so we have both sides here. Um, and I think it's really nice to see that there are Christians that are standing up for themselves and saying, you know, you don't, you don't have to be homophobic if you're Christian. You don't have to say, you know, there are different ways to look at each religion. And I'm sure within each religion, there are people who have differing opinions about it. Thank you. Uh, next question was uh, in the blue and white and then in the green. Hi, thank you. Um, as Ashok said before. Louder if you could. Yeah, yeah. Um, as Ashok said before, that there are few people who uh, you know know about LGBT and are very curious. So I wonder that do you have a goal of you know um, uh, that more people to know LGBT or ch even change their attitude towards LGBT when you report this you know LGBT um, uh, issues? And if you do, um, 
does it ch like affect your like fairness or objectivity of your reporting? Right. So I uh, the question here was: uh, Do reporters here on the panel have a goal in LGBT reporting, and does that affect fairness? Uh, does like that affect fairness? Fairness. Can I, uh, can I can I ask that of you? What what would you say to that question? Uh, I, I I don't know. I've got mixed feelings about it. <laughs> I'm I'm not, I'm not very sure that uh, a good reporter will not be fair. He'll he'll try his level best, even if he's not LGBT, uh, to be as fair as possible in reporting um, uh, events which are LGBT based. Uh, but I am worried about the fact that they uh, no journalist, either LGBT or non LGBT seems to have enough information about what modern LGBT rights are, what is called SOGI, sexual orientation and gender identity, which is part of the Jakarta principles. And that's what is missing uh, in this whole conversation, because I find justice and fair play will come only when you know about the other side. And that information is not out there. And I don't think a lot of journalists either LGBT or non-LGBT are doing enough research on that subject before they write about the, the issues. I don't know if uh, uh, that answers the question. All right, thank you. I, th I think you've got several kinds of journalists in front of you here. You've got professional people who will treat it objectively. You've got people like me who views themselves as an activist, and I'm trying to persuade. Um, I, I don't consciously believe I ever lie. Um, I try and tell the truth the way I see it, but I am trying to persuade the public of the case that we've got. Um, I don't think that's the case, certainly not um, on my right and left, but perhaps the two of us here would be in the similar boat. A little louder, please. I, would, I was saying that we're all different here, and I have definitely got the, the objective to persuade, because I came to writing through activism, and my belief is we have to persuade the Hong Kong public of what we're trying to say. Um, without um, the 95% of the public that is not LGBT understanding uh, and sympathizing with what we say, we will never actually get any legislation changed or alter society's views. So we are in that kind of boat, some of us here, not all. Hi, so my question relates to how you guys see yourselves within a regional context. Hong Kong reporters have a lot of freedom to write about LGBT issues in a way that a lot of Southeast Asian countries do not. Indian reporters and journalists have the freedom to write about a lot of issues in a way a lot of South Asian countries do not. And so how do you see your responsibilities in reporting in your specific countries, but with the idea that you will have, intentionally or unintentionally, you will have an impact on the situation for LGBT communities outside of your specific countries? I can take this one. Um, I definitely think it's a luxury that I'm able to be a journalist here reporting on LGBT rights because I don't feel threatened to. So I definitely should take adva full advantage of that and cover as much as possible that has to do with LGBT issues. Um, and hopefully that will make an impact, like a greater impact in the general region so people would be also less, of, like they, they know this news is happening and that there are LGBT people that exist here, because there's still like Asian countries that don't, even, that don't even recognize that homosexuality exists. So um, in, in that respect, I, I do hope that uh, that will in some way impact other journalists from those like more conservative Asian countries to, I don't know, take a stand and be more brave and uh, cover LGBT topics. Uh, Nigel, for you, just going along that line, with Friday as well, I mean, it's a, a, a regional, uh, international portal, so there is some clout, there's a lot of clout that Friday can do uh, along these lines, right? Could you talk a little bit more about yeah, that? Yeah, a lot of the stories in Friday cover the, um, almost everywhere around from Japan through to India, mostly Southeast Asia, um, but certainly now including here, here and, and Taiwan. Can you hear me, uh, So. Now I can. Yeah, fr Friday sees itself as a portal um, for spreading information and for political change, uh, for building communities through the Far East. So it, it deliberately aims to do that. 
There, there, are, there are many ways that this information flow assists us. Um, and, and in Hong Kong, I mean, I've always seen it that um, you publicize things which the Hong Kong government does outside Hong Kong, they get embarrassed and they stop doing it, maybe. Um, they don't like having what they've done shown to the world. So uh, we need to get beyond our boundaries. Uh, we need to actually uh, write for an audience which is far outside. And that's F-R-I-D-A-E, Friday, if people wanted to go. And I think we had one, one, one more? Okay. Um, yeah, we have, yeah. Go ahead. Shweta? Uh, my name is Yang, and I'm, I'm a journalism student at HKBU who does uh, researches and also uh, practice in media and gender studies, especially LGBT issues. So I participate a lot of uh, uh, LGBT communities in uh, the Great uh, China region. So uh, based on my research and also my uh, practice, I, I found that there's a problem for uh, today's media covering about uh, LGBT issues. It's, uh, sometimes um, there, uh, especially for those uh, journalists uh, who, who really care about uh, LGBT issues, who really uh, are fair and accurate and, and, and inclusive. But uh, sometimes maybe the journalists select those uh, uh, interviews, uh, 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 maybe uh, Maybe, f maybe for lesbians and uh, is one, uh, uh, the lesbian couples, so one is too feminine and one is too masculine, and for gays and one uh, looks uh, also the same. And that uh, sorry, could you ask your question? We're just running yeah, out of time. That is, sorry. Uh, th the what, is, what is your question? I think I think that is also one kind of stereotype because maybe in, in especially in Hong Kong, uh, with uh, the discriminatory law has ha hasn't been passed. Uh, sometimes for those people who are not who are not gay, but who looks uh, feminine, but uh, also who are, uh, those lesbian who are not lesbian, uh, those, who, those girls who are not lesbian, but they look uh, so fem uh, so masculine, and that brings trouble to them, and that really uh, 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 is is that is really a serious problem. So, uh, what do you think of that? Um, yeah, I'd agree that that stereotype, especially in Hong Kong, um, is really strong. That f in um, and, and you see it though in a lot of in all the lesbian relationships that not all sorry a lot of the lesbian relationships I see here um, you have the the TB the tomboy um, uh, and the more feminine um, I think maybe that is so strong in Hong Kong because it helps other people accept them because it's still fulfilling that uh, role of um, having a guy and a girl in a relationship. Um, I don't really know what else to say about that. Yeah, I can. I agree that that's a strong stereotype, um, but a lot of people are falling into that stereotype. Um, hopefully, you know that can evolve, um, and we can see more, more, more diverse diversity within relationships. Can I add one thing to the conversation? And you know, part of my um, uh, role in my project is that I can be as enthusiastic as I can possibly be in covering uh, LGBT issues, but if, my, if I cannot persuade my editors to run a story, that's a problem, you know? So there has to be buy-in, not just by the people who report, but also the people who decide what the public is going to read, hear, or see. And the really important thing is that people who, you know, whether or not you're Asian, black, Latino, or LGBT, we need to get people from those communities in positions of leadership within the newsrooms so there is that sensitivity uh, to these kinds of issues and that the likelihood of having reporters cover them is there. That makes sense. Um, I'd like to answer your question. I think it was more like whether or not if we report on stereotypes that that sort of also affects the community negativity, like negatively. Um, I, I don't think that necessarily matters. I, I think stereotypes exist also for a reason. Uh, there are so many facets of the LGBT community that there's bound to be events that do come up that will fit into certain stereotypes. And, but I think that's all part of fair reporting is we should cover them too and not 
just because there's a, um, uh, a circuit party coming up in Hong Kong doesn't mean that I shouldn't write about it because it paints gay men as just like, it's like they like go dance and they like go drink and, but that's actually in essence part of the community too. Uh, I think about fair, report, uh, fair reporting for the LGBT community means not alienating any aspect of it. Yeah, I'm gonna be a, a little contrarian here, but if that's the only thing you cover, then that's a problem. Well, that's no, thankfully it's not. But if they are, they are like, I mean, um, if there are events like that, I will still cover them because that's still important to the community. Uh, one last question, just from me, because many jour many journalists are here. Are there opportunities for journalists here to write? for your publications, from Friday to plug to Time Out, although you cover LGBT, so maybe you wouldn't want to, but also in India, uh, are there opportunities, and please let the audience know if there are. Yes, for Friday, if anybody's interested, grab me afterwards. Yep, and uh, like same for plug, yep, like we're always that. looking for new contributors, um, so come and get a card from me afterwards if you're interested. Same goes for me. Uh, Rami. And Ashok, if uh, there's yes. anyone in India or someone passing through, are there opportunities to report on LGBT issues there, perhaps working with you? Oh, there are fantastic opportunities. India is a fascinating land, a lot of diversity. It's uh, one of the few countries in the world where uh, transgender have an identity. They can get passports. Um, they're an ethnic religious minority. So there are always opportunities. In fact, a lot of newspapers in India have an LGBT page on one particular week in the uh, on one particular day in the week, and uh, fascinating subjects are coming up. Uh, at the moment, there's this big argument going on about the Supreme Court letting us down and striking down the Delhi High Court judgment that had decriminalized homosexuality, uh, or at least decriminalized sodomy. So what we really have is a fascinating array of subjects. You can really do one good article every week in depth. Uh, there was the Nalsa judgment, which is uh, which gives uh, transgender a particular identity. It gives them a right to affirmative action in government jobs and government housing. So uh, uh, they kept on discussing that subject for over 10 days. It's still going on. So what I mean to say is that Yes, there are opportunities. Yes, there are now a lot of gay and lesbian journalists in uh, in the media. And not only that, but uh, in the English press and in some of the language press, uh, there's a lot of sensitivity and capability of uh, reporting on these subjects. But I, think, I still think that we've got a long way to go. Thank you. All right, Ashok, thank you. I'll give you the last word. So with that, there are opportunities as journalists if you want to cover, so speak with the panelists here. Uh, thank you very much. Please uh, help me give them a round of applause. Thank you for your interest. <laughs>